Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can work all day on your homestead and make it look like you've accomplished nothing at all. Hang on, I'll show you how to do it. All right guys, what we're gonna be doing today is getting our corn plot ready for winter. And we're gonna show you a couple things that you can do to uh, add to your soil and uh, get it ready so that it'll be ready in the spring. We'll show you how you can get you some free worm castings and we'll show you how we put a garden to bed for the winter. So if you hang on, we got a lot of footage. We'll try to get through it as quick as we can and then I'll be back to talk to you at the end. All right guys, we're out here at the corn patch and uh, Actually, that's just some volunteer corn. It's about a foot and a half tall. But I'll back up here so you can see the real corn patch. We had a couple of sticks come up, but we're getting ready to tuck this patch in for winter. And uh, we've left it stand fallow since we grew the corn in it this summer. We took about 700 years off of here. Not a very big patch, but we tight plant. And uh, we've got our harvest video up if anybody's interested in seeing that. But this soil has been uh, badly abused. We uh, grew a lot of corn in here, and it's time to give back a little bit. So the only thing that we've done so far is, if you can see these wood chips here, I'll wander up in here. But uh, this is some bedding from uh, some chickens and stuff that we uh, were growing out there in the basement before they got their feathers and stuff and could come out with the others, but it's some old bedding. We've gone ahead and spread that out on here. And uh, the next step is going to be to turn this under. I'm going to go get the tractor and uh, we'll turn this under and I'll show you what it looks like when I get done with that. All right, guys, we've got one turn on the corn patch so far. It looks really good. It looks like the, we left all the corn stalks standing. Well, we didn't leave them standing. We turned them in after we picked the corn. I think we showed that on video. But uh, they looks like they've broken down really well. And uh, we're going to go through here and turn this again. And uh, let's see if we can find Tina. There she is. She's getting ready. Well, hey, Tina, waved everybody. She's getting ready to start to clean out on the chicken houses. So we're going to bring that, the leftovers from that over here and put them on the garden too. But I need to get this turned a second time. We always turn it twice. The tiller is directional. It throws dirt backwards. So, uh, if you always till in the same direction, you'll start to develop unevenness and hills in your garden after a while. It's a, uh, I can tell you, we've uh, been a few places where we've gardened long enough that that made a difference. So we always turn twice and we turn in opposite directions and that helps keep the garden leveled out. But I'll see if you can uh, take a good look here. I'll try to show you this same shot after I get it turned a second time. But you can see these, the odd piles here on the ends of the garden and stuff, those will all even out. And we'll see if you can tell if the ground's a little more even when I get done with this second turn. All right, guys, we got the second turn on the garden done, or the corn patch. But uh, hopefully you can see that it does make a big difference to turn it a second time. But uh, let's see, find Tina. Oh, she's broken into this chicken house now. She's finished the far one, and uh, she's working on this one here. And we're going to take all the chicken dirt out of these and we got one more over there where the buff brahmas live but uh, these are the Ayam Samanis the all black chickens you guys probably heard about but uh, we're gonna go ahead and finish getting the chicken dirt out of there and the third one and then we're gonna spread it on this garden but to make it easier to spread it on this garden I'm gonna go ahead and flatten the surface of it and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the the weight and width of the tires the the tires are liquid filled so I'm going to run back and forth and I'm going to put tire tracks over the entire surface of the garden and compact it down so that'll make it easier to get the carts out there and stuff and get stuff spread out. So let me get that flattened and I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like when it's all driven over. But I can't tell you, having all this fresh turned dirt on a day when it's 85 degrees outside will certainly make any gardener think about running back in the house and getting their seed box. But. <laughs> That'd be nice to plant this all up and pretend it was spring, but this is a corn patch. This is also a brand new patch of dirt. 
that uh, we grew in for the first time this year and uh, this dirt needs a lot of work so we've already got a uh, we've already got some bedding in there from the grow out chickens but uh, we have uh, we have this bedding and stuff to go on it and then we've got a couple other things we're going to do and we'll show you all that as we go along all right guys i'm gonna bring you back in and give you a look at what it looks like when it's all tracked in but i've got it packed down there's just some small ridges there but now we can drive the the lawn tractor or the mower in there with the carts and stuff to put on this chicken bedding and things like that without sinking them clear to the axles so i'll go ahead and break it back up again after we get that stuff done but uh wanted to give it a stir and then we need to pack it back down so that we can work with it the little ridges won't affect the lawn mower but um, we need to be able to get in there and pull the mower we've got to see if we can show you not the greatest picture up there in the center we've got the grass sweeper hooked up to the mower there and uh, we're going to be doing some grass sweeping and I'm trying not to turn you too fast you can see the shovel coming out the door of the chicken house that's tina cleaning up the chickens but uh, she cracks me up but uh, we're going to go ahead and get that stuff put on here and then we'll bring you back and show you what we're going to do all right guys between the three chicken houses that cart probably holds at least 100 pounds of chicken dirt but uh between the three chicken houses we'll have three carts of a uh, of good almost pure nitrogen to throw on the garden it's got uh, feathers mixed in it too so there's a little calcium uh, but it's a uh, it's a great way to uh, make use of the chicken dirt and uh I need to uh, shut this off before Tina comes over here and kills me for not helping. All right, guys, just a quick shot. We'll take a little bit closer look at this dirt. We've got the chicken bedding spread out, and you'll see odd feathers and stuff laying around in here too. But uh, now I'm going to go through the same process. I'm going to turn it twice, and then I'm going to pack it back down so that we can uh, get in here and get it covered up for the winter all right guys I'm bringing you back in now we've got the chicken fertilizer spread on there and we've got it tilled in and flattened back out again that's the second time we've tilled and flattened it but this is how the ground is gonna stay now I'm sure there's gonna be a couple of questions about uh, why we pack the ground um, one is the packed ground will help slow down leaching the leaching will over the winter as the snows fall and thaw and and you know they melt down through there or we get rains or the spring rains before we get a chance to till this garden we don't want all of our nutrients to just go down deep into the soil and then over there to the creek and see the creek is there behind tina waved everybody tina all right but uh we got a we're gonna pack this ground down. We've got it packed down and uh, that'll slow down leaching, but it'll also, uh, um, we've got a lot of organic material in this soil. So that soil is gonna, that organic material is gonna break down over the winter and that'll loosen up the soil too because one of the things we're gonna do, and I'll show you here in a minute, was we're gonna cover this with grass clippings and then we're gonna encourage the worms to come up and leave their worm castings. So. Well, that's a rather than plant a cover crop we're going to do that but i'll explain all that in a minute when we get to it so but that's why we pack it and uh, it also uh, lets us uh, drive on it and it also keeps the ground from absorbing excess moisture you know it should be just like your lawn it's or it's packed like your lawn and it'll shed excess moisture in a heavy rain rather than try to soak it all in and become a mud hole so we want it packed just about the consistency of the lawn and it'll it'll be softer in the spring after we've had it covered and the worms have worked on it and the organic materials have broken down but it'll be in good shape for spring you'll see we'll bring you back and update it then but uh we'll be back we're gonna we're gonna get the lawn sweeper hooked up and we're gonna get this covered down and we'll show you what that looks like all right guys bring in here and show you what we're doing now we're uh Tina's running around, she's got the rake. It's gonna be a little noisy here for a second, but she's got the sweeper rake on the back of the tractor, on the back of her lawnmower. And uh, she'll run around and she'll pick up loads of grass and bring them back here. And then I'll take the rake 
and we're putting the grass on probably six inches deep or so but uh, we'll cover the entire garden with it what that'll do is shade the ground it'll help hold moisture in there it'll also uh, bring the worms up to eat and it'll keep them closer to the surface because we're shading the surface of the ground now they want to get away from the sunlight but the more stuff you pile on top of the ground the higher in the ground they'll come so we want them to come up here and eat and leave their worm castings behind and uh, we want this ground protected from the UV and uh, we want it, the soil, the enzymes and stuff in the soil to stay active. Now I know a lot of people don't like tilling and stuff, but uh, we till it, but it's also very brief and then we'll cover it down. But uh, there, uh, the grass adds a, adds a nice thermal barrier to it in the winter. It won't get as cold, but um, it also, if we're gonna have nutrients leach into the soil, I'd rather it be the nitrogen and stuff from the grass and another thing is, is as we remove nitrogen and stuff from our lawn, the lawn grows slower, <laughs> so we don't have to uh, mow as often. So we cut down on our mowing by moving all the nitrogen into the garden. So we'll go ahead and get this uh, covered up. I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like. And if you have any questions, be sure you let me know in the comments. But we'll be right back to show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, guys. Some of you will know what I mean. But a big project like this is usually you bust your butt all day long. And if you do it just right, it looks like you hardly did anything. <laughs> so we have worked really, really hard. That's a 47 loads of grass on there and spread. But uh, it just kind of blends right in with the, let me back out, it just kind of blends right in with the lawn and looks like we hardly did anything. So. But that garden is covered up. Now I'll consider it basically done. Now if this grass wears down before uh, winter and we've got another big mowing, I may turn this in with the tiller and uh, lay a new fresh layer on top before the snow gets here. But for right now, we're calling it done and we'll get to working on putting the other gardens to bed. But you can see in the raised boxes over there, we still have plenty of harvesting left to do. So. We're not quite done with the year yet, but we're finishing up these little projects we need to get out of the way so that Jack Frost can make his appearance. All right, guys, that's about gonna wrap it up for today's video. Like I said, if you do this project right, it'll look like you didn't do anything at all. So we must have done something right. But if you liked the video, we hope you'll give it a thumbs up or leave us a comment down below. Tell us how you get your gardens ready for winter. Or if you have any questions about what we do to get ours ready and how we prepare our soil, then please feel free to leave those down in the comments. And if you like the content here on the channel, we hope you'll subscribe. There's a subscribe button down below and beside that is a bell. If you'll ring that bell, that'll send you a notification whenever we release a new video, which is a great way to keep up with the channel. Now we got one more thing going on and that's our giveaway. Our giveaway is going on until October 1st at 10 a.m. Um, I'm going to put a link up here in the corner somewhere and uh, if you'll click on that link that'll take you to the entry video. Everybody's eligible, new subscribers and old. So if you're seeing this, if you're here at the channel for the first time, you're still eligible. All you need to do is subscribe and follow the directions there on that video. But uh, I, like I said, I'll leave the link up above and uh, we hope that you guys will take advantage of it and you old subscribers, if you will refer people, those are all the more entries for you guys. So we wish everybody luck. We're gonna award one of the one of the Lodge Cast Iron Skillets to a new subscriber and one to an old subscriber. So that's our, that's our goal. So we've got two to give away. That's how we intend to give them away. So if you would, please uh, again, hit that thumbs up button, leave us a comment down below, share our videos with your friends there on social media. That really helps us get the, get the word out. But uh, we've had a great time today. We hope you enjoyed the video. We hope you enjoyed your visit here at the homestead. We'll catch you in the next one.